The Operation Positive Identification being planned by the Nigerian army hasn't even started and critics have already begun to speak against it. And an end to the Ambadi versus Lagos State House of Assembly saga seems to be nowhere in sight as the former governor has dragged the assembly to court. This is PLOS Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. The House of Representatives has called on President Muhammadu Buhari to suspend Operation Positive Identification being planned by the Nigerian Army. Several members of the House condemned the operation as anti-people, which has the potential to violate human rights. Besides the lawmakers, Nigerian Bar Association, the Committee for the Defense of Human Rights, and Michael Zakome, a senior advocate of Nigeria, have also expressed that they do not support the operation. Thank you for joining us. With me in the studio to talk about this is a legal practitioner, Kristen Wogu. A pleasure to have you join us. It's my pleasure, Felicity. Opera yet to be implemented. Is it really anti-people, as they are saying? Look, it's really intimidating. And um, anything that tends to trigger off fright or even fight in the people has to be watched very carefully. I don't know where this is coming from, but I'm not sure that's the ultimate. Well, maybe because the president has a military background, so he tends to see everything from the militarized um, glasses. But um, this uh, program, it's, it, we can't justify it. It will make people afraid. People will just be afraid of going on the street. Businesses will be impacted adversely. So um, maybe they will come with more clarity, but if it is just for military people to be on the road, checking people's um, passports, uh, re registration for driver's license, etc., not everybody has these things. So it's, it's anti-people. It's, 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 it's going to prove, it's going to make people, it's going to dehumanize people. And anything that makes people look like they are less than human beings. And it's Is, isn't it being exaggerated? Because the, the expression you're uh, putting up now is similar to what the House of Representatives uh, came up with. And uh, some of the words that was used by the minority leader of the House was that the OPI is going to downgrade Nigerians to suspects and take away their fundamental uh, freedom of movement. He also uh, mentioned the fact that it's a an indirect imposition of a state of emergency in this country. Isn't this being a little overblown? Look, you see, Felicity, you're a little bit younger. For some of us who had a little bit of the civil war, uh, you find that that's the kind of picture that I tend to see where you know the military are there then to enforce everybody um, complying with one Nigeria, and it's the elderly will be subjected to it. The young, the I remember in my uh, with some the eye of a child that it triggered fear. That's the kind of thing I think we are. We we look. There are other agencies who are a lot more friendlier, like the um, civil defense. It, it, they could do this. But I still think that all the money that we put into all of this whole thing can be put into getting people to be gainfully employed, doing businesses, which ultimately, because this is going to last just till December. So after December, what happens? So every other person still can walk the street. But the, the, the thing about this um, um, operation, so to speak, was that it was all, it's already in operation in the Northeast, and they think that the, it has recorded some success. This whole conversation started, I think, in September, when they announced that they are going to try and make it uh, nationwide. But before you answer that question, I had a conversation with someone yesterday. Let's just take a look at that uh, conversation uh, with a political analyst, and then we will continue this conversation here. Stay with us. You cannot militarize the country under the guise that we want to prevent aliens from coming in or identify aliens already in the country, or we want to check um, armed robbers or kidnappers. Uh, the fact of the matter is, if you go through the Constitution, the main function of the Nigerian military is to protect 
the country from external aggression. In fact, the only condition upon which the Nigerian soldiers could be called to police for policing duty is if there is a total breakdown of law and order, and the Nigerian police force now decides that, look, we just cannot cope, you know, with the crisis. Currently, we, we don't have a crisis. We don't have such a uh, crisis of that magnitude that we were around bringing in soldiers to do that. What you see is that the army is overreaching itself and being indulged by the federal government against the provision of the Constitution. They are not trained on policing duty. The job of identifying aliens belongs to immigration. You cannot keep the immigration department there and then ask the army to do their job. Is it that you scrap the immigration department and expand the functions of the military? As long as that has not taken place, it is totally wrong. Two, the soldiers are not trained. The military are not trained, you know, to investigate you know, carry out intelligence uh, gathering on criminals. It is strictly the functions, functions of the Nigerian police force. So I don't know what will be gained, you know, by bringing in untrained soldiers, you know, particularly on policing duty, you know, to uh, come and try and identify criminals and all that. Because at the end of the day, you are likely going to have an increase in complaints, harassment of people, violation of fundamental rights of Nigerians to free movement. And at the end of the day, some people might even end up being shot because soldiers are not trained to arrest people. They were trained to, they're trained to actually kill. The police are trained, you know, to arrest people and prosecute. The soldiers cannot even prosecute, you know, people who they found to have infringed the law. They have to hand them over to the police. So, therefore, bringing in the soldiers in this situation is totally wrong. And I think the House of Reps is completely right. A quick reaction to that video. Absolutely. He has oh, only agreed with the points I'd made earlier, maybe amplify them uh, a lot more. Um, situations where the military, now you, before the video came, you were talking about the Yes, it was operating. I wanted to get your quick yeah, thoughts yeah, on that before yeah. we move on. The yeah. Northeast, they said they've acquired some success and they want to replicate it across the country. Now, don't forget that in the Northeast, there is crisis. There is a Boko Haram crisis. We don't have similar all over the country. So the situation now is a situation where, because there's crisis in the Northeast, therefore, you, it, has to, it has to be simulated across the country. Uh, that's not right. Uh, and then when they say there has been successes, I think that again is subjective because um, it's, it's not the person that wants to implement. It's the people in the Northeast that will come and tell us we are all free. Everybody can come over now, they are, everything is normal. But I don't think that is the situation as a date. So I, I think the, 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 the soldier should confront the issue of insurgency directly and not okay. try to circumnavigate it. But you agree that we have um, um, a very heightened um, security situation in this country that has everyone worried. Do you agree that much? No, that is very clear. That is correct. And there has been suggestion that um, we need drastic and strong-willed um, actions to help curb the security situation. Wouldn't you say that this measure, though drastic, might have some effect in curbing insurgency and insecurity in the short term. Now, don't well, again mind what you're saying in the short term. Now, but the point is this: that curbing insurgency, criminality, kidnapping, and all the other crimes are function. There, there are too many factors that are responsible for this. For instance, one major factor is unemployment. There are people who maybe originally wouldn't have turned into crime if they had responsible engagement um, that keeps them busy all, all through the day, through the week, through the month, through the year, through the decade. But eventually, because there is nothing else to do, they just find. So why don't we start, if, we, if there is a conscientious um, motivation, why don't we start by getting unemployment resolved so that we can trim down the level of engagement in, in crime. And then intelligence gathering doesn't have to be by force. So when, when, be... when we talk, I'm, I'm sorry we are deviating yeah. a little, but when we talk about the rate of unemployment and its effects on security, 
there is no way, I don't think anywhere in the world, that in, um, unemployment or the economy just woke up overnight. It took a lot of time with consistent effort. Apparently, it doesn't seem to be happening for us. Unemployment is not abating. Rather, analysts say it is increasing. So are we going to continue to have a perpetual situation of insecurity because of, and then, because of unemployment? And if that is the case, then it rubbishes what the army is doing. Now, you see, if we bring the army, remember that people who are into crime have really, they, they deploy a lot of intelligence to be in crime. So it's like, now, this is public. Assuming that that's what will eventually. So the, the criminal will, is already anticipating this and will ultimately possibly benefit from this because the attention is now being moved from the criminal to everybody. In this case, everybody is perceived as being criminal, which is again unconstitutional. Because even where someone has actually committed crime, he's still presumed innocent, innocent. and keep proven guilty. So this situation is a situation like, look, everybody in Nigeria is a criminal. Come and prove to us that you're not one. I, you are talking about other crimes. I don't think that would be acceptable to in civilized economies. OK. Um, your position at the moment is this is anti-people. You yeah, agree with the House of Reps yeah, and, uh, and the rest of them. Yes. The reps are now asking that the president should review the proposal by the army um, because, I mean, they obviously don't want it to be uh, in this country. Do you see that happening? Because we have antecedent. There were um, times when the army has come up with operation and the people cried out that this is not good for the people, this is not good for us, but the army went ahead. Do you see the president Listen, actually doing something more, this time? Let's even assume that it's a great idea. But if the representatives of the people tells the president, hold on on this review, this. I think that the president is obligated to that. Will he? No, no, well, whether he will or not, we need to know. That's why we are talking. Somewhere, somebody is hearing, somebody is going to let him know. But he's possibly even listening himself. You know, he needs to comply. There are, these are arms of government. So if an arm of government says, Mr. President, this is what you want to do, hold on, let's review. I mean, you let's are Nigerians. So we've had cases of the president not responding to law, I mean, to court orders in this country, even though they still use the court to get uh, verdicts that they want. But in this instance, like, people are saying, they, they, everyone is saying they don't want it. But will, do you see the presidency listening to the people and because he's the commander in chief of the armed forces yeah. i mean president buhari now compel the army to shelve this plan you know well look if he doesn't it, it becomes impunity it becomes arbitrary it weighs a minus to the presidency and you know ag the aggregation of all these minuses will ultimately speak one way or the other so I think the president should listen to the people, basically, because he has our mandate. We put him there. And if our representative says, look, let's review, I don't see why the president or the presidency should turn a deaf ear. Um, a member of the House, uh, Adamu, I think Amadu, um, what's his name again, Jaha, in his contribution, uh, suggested that the army might have run out of ideas. That if they've run out of ideas on how to uh, manage the security situation in the country, that they should be open about it and ask the people, is this the case in your opinion? Um, well, look, uh, we could just answer by saying the last time we were here, we were talking about using Juju and the hunters to go after the insurgents. Now we have left the insurgents, so we want to turn the beam, the searchlight on the people. What does that really show? It shows that there is a challenge in, in, in what to do. Somebody needs to come out and say that I have a challenge. And as a matter of fact, Felicity, I don't think that the commander in chief against all of these odds should wait for somebody to say, I have no more ideas. I think at this point, somebody should be fired. If they are fired, do we have the right people to replace them or we'll just we'll recycle? Just keep, because I, I, we do I, know that in I this I think we we'll just keep firing until we, some, somebody right brings the right command. Yeah. Look, we can't keep going this way like we, there, is, there is like a lot of motion, no movement. There has to be, and we must see this. It's not just about what 
one minister or advisor or press secretary comes and tells the whole nation, look, if something is working, you and I will know it's working. Everybody will know, we will feel it. The sense of sake, look, for somebody to travel on Nigerian roads today, he, 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 the person has to actually psyche the person itself. Because somewhere along the line, a judge is being, a judge of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is being kidnapped, not just once. It, it, it's, it's a challenge. Somebody ideally should resign and say, look, I, I, I need to stop here. Let somebody try. OK, let, let's, let's, let, me, let me just be a bit uh, pessimistic for a second and maybe create another scenario of the House now making an order or putting out motion, as suggested by um, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Michael Zakame, that they should go beyond condemning and asking the president to review the operation, but go ahead and call for maybe an order of the House mandating the president not to go ahead with that proposal by the army. Do you see that scenario playing out? Has it gotten to that point? Should the president... No, no essentially, we also have to be careful so that we don't hit up the... The polity is considered very hit up. And so we shouldn't hit it up the more. Uh, we need to allow the president to react to the expression of the house. Look, let's review. I, I think the, look, this is a tenure. This is something that has a term. And you know that we've seen people come to account for their omissions or actions even after their term ended. So I, I don't think we should hit the polity too much again. In the, we, we just had a judgment uh, saying article uh, as appeal has no merit, that one is there. We've not even come to, the people haven't started reacting to it because of this militarization of, I mean, proposed. So let's just take them step by step. Let's give also the president some benefit of the doubt. What options do the army have to essentially arrest the insecurity in this country? Because it seems you even alluded to it that they're running out of ideas. Yeah, so the army at this point can actually engage. There can be a conference. I mean, let's have uh, not a conference of both the retired army officers and other um, security agencies, and then also the civil society. Let's really sit down and hear out what the military is. What what is there? What where are they going? There's too much money that's been voted into security. What's been achieved? Now, as a matter of fact, the last time the president traveled to the US, we're talking about ordering a, a plane? Uh, yes, and that will come in in 2021. Now, how far has that even gotten to? Uh, we, we just see the delivery in 2021, but before then, what happens? We need to sit down and talk. Uh, it may now become more inclusive than exclusive to try and find solution, and then if, there is treachery, because sometimes this thing could just be a matter of treachery. And no matter how much you put into a system and is being eaten from inside, you know, and somebody is really profiting from inside, and the Boko Haram is really somebody in the inside, that may just be a challenge. So a lot of intelligence can go ahead and get that insider out. And you just find that there is peace all over the place. The, the, but, uh, you mentioned something earlier about the army responding to this, I mean, the president responding. But the army who has come up with this plan and there is this overwhelming reaction to it before it even begins, I think on November uh, November 20, I think that November 1, it's scheduled to begin one, yes. uh, November 1. Yes, and that's so December 20 something. Yeah. Exactly. Is it possible? that the army has not properly communicated what they want because um, a, a rep or a spokesperson of the army, that's um, Shager, said that he described insinuations, that's a report by the Premium Times now, that Nigerians would witness a large number of army personnel parading the roads to demand identity card. Um, the, the response is vague, he just said fake news, there's been no response. Does yes. the army have a yeah, responsibility? You know, you see, that's a healthy development as well because you see, the army too, I believe, is trying to readjust even on their own. Shouldn't they communicate better? I think they should, but again, they are communicating. They are saying something. They are saying that all of this whole thing, from what I read, 
is not true. So we may just need to believe them. There's not going to be any military uh, militarization of the system. If, if it is not true, <laughs> why is the House of Representatives talking about no, it? No, but because it has been all over the place. We are not just reading about it today. It's just that the House is reacting to it today. So it's been all over the place. And in fact, the army hadn't res responded until the House of Rep actually rose up and said, and unanimously for that matter, said, look, this is no, no, no go area. It's they should drop the idea, in your yes, opinion. I think they should. I think they should. But again, dropping the idea doesn't mean that they should drop the idea of securing the nation. Because look, if insurgency is coming from outside, now like the analysis of um, our friend, yes, yeah, if it's coming from us, that's where the military needs to find out where this is coming from and nip it. In the bud. Uh, but if it's something in the inside, look, police is our friend. At this time, I think police is our friend. <laughs> Thank you very much for your You're thoughts welcome. on this segment <laughs> of the program. We will go on a short break and when we return, the issues facing embattled former governor of Lagos State will be up for conversation to stay with us. <laughs> 